All right, so this video we're going to look at finding uh, local max and min of functions in two variables. So let's go ahead and get started. So it says suppose the second, and, and we're going to use the second derivative test. It says suppose the second partial derivatives of f are continuous on a disk with center AB, and suppose that the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y, okay, of ab are both equal to zero, and let d equal the second partial of f times the second partial of y, okay, and those are both evaluated at ab, at a point ab, minus the partial of f with respect to x, then with respect to y, that's the second partial, of ab squared. That's what d equals. So if d is positive and the second partial of f with respect to x is positive, then f of ab is a local minimum. And if d is positive and the second partial of f with respect to x of ab is negative, then f of ab is a local maximum. And if d is less than zero, then f of ab is not a local maximum or minimum. All right. And it says, note, in case c, the point ab is called a saddle point of f, and the graph of f crosses its tangent plane at ab. So uh, a saddle point, what, what that is, so, those, so the first two in parts a and b, you're either going to have a local maximum or a local minimum, okay? And that that's going to happen when D is positive. So if D is positive, you can have a local max or a local min, all right? Now, one, one way you can think about it is if you remember when we did the first, uh, when we did, when, when you did, uh, local max and mins for functions in one variable, okay, when you found concavity, concave up, concave down. Remember, you would use the second derivative, and on the second derivative, if it was uh, positive, then it was what? It was concave up, and if it was negative, it was concave down. So you can kind of look at it like that. See, if the second derivative here if that's positive, you can look at it like concave up. There's your minimum. If it's less than zero, the second derivative, concave down. Remember when you did single variable, functions in one variable. Okay, concave down, and you can look at that as a maximum. That could, that could be an easy way to remember it. <clears throat> and a saddle point, what that is, is at that point, uh, Maybe if you look along the, say, the x-axis, it increases, okay? So as you move out along the x-axis, say, so, so you have a point, and I, I'm not going to even try to draw it because I can't, I'm, I won't be able to draw it good, but let's say you have a point sitting there, and, and then you move out along the x-axis, and that thing's increasing. That would be like it's going up, like concave up, but then say if, from that point, you move out along the y-axis, okay, and it's decreasing, okay? So that's what happens with the saddle node. I mean, I'm sorry, with the saddle point, all right? And then if d equals zero, the test gives no information, all right? So let's go ahead and look at an example, okay? All right, so let's look at example two. It says, examine the given function for relative maximum and minimum points. Okay, relative maximum, minimum, local maximum, minimum, same thing. So we've got z is equal to x squared plus xy plus y squared plus 3x minus 3y plus 1. All right, now what I like to do is I like to write down what all we need, okay? So if you remember what we just looked at at the first of the video, 
we know that we have d is equal to second partial with respect to x times second partial with respect to y minus the mixed partial squared okay and I and and yes that should be evaluated at a B I'm just right I'm not writing all that out this is just you know so we can see what we're what we need to find and remember in order to find a B we've got to take the first partial set it equal to zero and the second and the first, the first partial with respect to x and the first partial with respect to y, we've got to set each one of those equal to zero. And, and what we're looking for is we need to know is the second partial pos, uh, greater than, is it greater than zero, or is it less than zero? And then we've also got to look at d. Is it greater than zero? Is it less than zero? Or does it equal, let me put an equal sign there, or does it equal zero? Okay, so the, the reason I look at all that and write all that down, it lets me know what all do I need to find. Well, I've got to find the first partial with respect to x and with respect to y, and then I've got to find the second partials. So what I like to do, I like to go ahead and just find those first. Okay, just, just get that out of the way. So I've got the partial with respect to x. That is equal to 2x plus y plus 3. And then I've got, let's see, the partial with respect to y. That's going to be x plus 2y minus 3. And then let's take the second partial with respect to x so that's the partial and yeah i guess i should not really the function's not in terms of uh f it's in terms of z i could write that but i'm just going to keep it f you know just for for just for my sake you know maybe write this Whoop. Okay, not a big deal. Why did I do that? Because all my formulas are f of. Okay, that's the only reason. It's, it's not a big deal. And this is just for, you know, to make it easier for me so I can look up here and, and see what we got to find. All right, so I've got the partial of f with respect to x, and then I take the partial of this with respect to x, so that is 2. And then I've got the partial, the second partial with respect to y. So I take the partial of this with respect to y, which gives me this, and then the partial of this with respect to y is 2. Okay, And then I've got the second partial with respect to x, and then with respect to y. So that's the partial of this with respect to x gives me this, and then the partial of this with respect to y, well, that's 1. Okay, you should know how to take partial derivatives now. If not, go, go watch the videos I have on partial derivatives. I've got them on finding the first partial and the second partials. So watch that if you need to. All right, so, so what do we need to do now? We need to set each of these equal to zero, right? We've got to set this equal to zero, and we've got to set this equal to zero. So let's do that. So if I do that, that's going to give me 2x plus y equals negative 3. I went ahead and moved the 3 to the other side of the equal sign. And then this one I get x plus 2y equals 3. And I moved this minus 3 to the other side. And so what this is, I've just got a system of equations to solve. Really, this is easy. This stuff is easy. The, the, the thing that's going to be difficult about this is figuring out what A and B is. Now, the first example I worked, that wasn't hard. This one, not difficult at all. But some of them, some of them can get kind of messy. Okay? But now all we have is a system of equations to solve. So hopefully you remember how to do that. So this, no, not that one. I mean, I could do that one. But this one, 
just going to multiply it by negative 2. That will allow me to get rid of the x's. So 2x two x, well, two x plus y equals negative 3. Negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 6. And so that's negative 3y equals negative 9. Y equals 3. And then to find x, we just take the 3, plug it into one of those. So 2x plus 3 equals negative 3. 2x is negative 6, which that gives me x is negative 3. And so my ab, that is negative 3, 3. So that's what we're going to be testing. Is it a local max, min? saddle point or test inconclusive. That's what we got to find now. So remember what we've got to do now is what? We've got to evaluate each of those at this point. Okay. So let's start off. I've got the second partial with respect to x at negative 3, 3. Now I'm showing this because I mean I know this is going to be this is going to be two, and the second partial of f with respect to y is going to be two, and the and the partial second partial of f with respect to x and then y that's going to be one when I evaluate it at this point. I mean, there it's always going to be two. This one's going to always be two. This one's going to always be one. Okay, I know that, but I want to show this step because sometimes you'll have an x or a y in these. And you'll have you'll have to plug it in. I just want to show show you that we are actually taking this point and we're plugging it into each one of these, even though it's constant. There's no there's no x or y to plug it into. I'm still showing you that step. And then we've got this of negative three three. That's equal to two. And then f x y of negative three three. That's equal to 1. All right, so now we've got to get D. So D is equal to the second partial evaluated times the second partial respect to Y evaluated at that point minus the mixed partial. squared. And so now all we're doing all we're doing now is we're taking these values here and just plugging them in. So I'm going to get d is equal to 2. See, that's 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. That's going to give me 3. Okay? So that gives me 3. Now, what do I have to know to make my decision? Okay, well, that's from the other video, but here you go. I've got that right there. Okay, what? let's see. If D is positive and the second partial of F with respect to X is positive, there's a minimum. If D is positive and then the second partial is negative, I have a local maximum. Well, D is positive, so I'm only dealing with the first two. So if we remember, uh, the second partial with respect to X was 2, so it's positive 2. It's positive also, so I have a local minimum. All right, so we can see this is positive, and then I'm interested on this one. That one's positive. These are the two that tell me if I have a local max or min. Okay, that's what I've got to look at. They're both positive. So I have a local minimum at negative 3, 3 with a value f of negative 3, 3 equals. So you take the negative 3, 3 and you plug it in to the original. All right, with a value of, and I, I punched this into my calculator and got four, I'm sorry, negative 14. 
assuming I didn't hit the, a wrong button or something, okay, you can check that. I mean, if it's not right, then I just hit, I just punched it in my calculator wrong, okay? I didn't go back and double check myself, but you need, you should go back and double check yourself, okay? All right, so that's, that's all of this video. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and check out my other videos, and I'll see you later.